Hello guys, Mati here. I was thinking about making this tutorial because I think that I've been using a lot of method references, a lot of lambda expressions in all my tutorials, and maybe some of you don't really know what lambda expressions are or how they work, or you are confused because of the weird uh, syntax of the method references. So hopefully this video will help you understand everything there is to know about those things and you will be able to follow along every tutorial that I make. Welcome to Programming with Mati. Let's take a quick look to this function. In this function we have the list of the names of the Ninja Turtles and what we want to do is we want to print the names in uppercase. So we go through the list with a for loop and we set them to uppercase and then we print them. Pretty easy, right? And before the streams API was introduced in Java 8, we had to do something like this. We had to do a, either a for or a while loop and we had to go through the list and we would end up with a code block like this one here. But now after the introduction of the stream API and Lambda expressions, this kind of logic can be written in a more compact way. So we're going to see how we do that here. So first thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this and I'm going to say stream off. Here's how you can create a stream from an array. This is an array, an implicit array. And now let's remove this. And from the stream API, I can use the method map to transform this into uppercase. So how do I do this? I had to provide a function. It says here, I had to provide a function which takes a string and returns something. And this function is called a mapper. So before Lambda expressions, if I wanted to implement this, I would need to either go and create a new class that implements this function, or I could simply create an anonymous function like this. So I want to have a string and it return a string as well. And I need to implement also the method here is going to say, please go, please go ahead and implement the methods. So I'm going to implement the method apply. And now I have to write here the logic, which is um, S dot to uppercase and finally i go here and say for each and this takes a consumer which is a different interface and same i had to do new consumer and i have to implement the method accept so in this case what i want to do is simply print with system out print line and just s so if I go ahead and run this program here and it printed the list of the names in uppercase. So this is great, but now I have even written more code than before. So how is this an improvement, right? That's why Java 8 also introduced Lambda expressions. Lambda expressions are simply a more compact way to implement anonymous classes. So if I want to write this as a lambda, I could simply say, for example, something like this. And now I say return s to uppercase. And this is what we know as a full body lambda. You see, now we have a lot less code than before. But we still have these curly braces here. And let's just go ahead and replace this one also with a lambda. And just for the sake of this demo, I'm going to put it as a full body lambda as well. Let's just do this. So now we have two full body lambdas. You see, we have the parameter. We don't have to declare the type because it's implied on the return type of this and we don't have to also declare the return type because it's implied on this value 
So the compiler already knows that it takes a string and it returns a string. Same here, the compiler knows that it takes a string and that it's a consumer, so it doesn't return anything. Now, if we run this, you see, we have the same output. So this is how, this is how in Java 8 we can create new anonymous classes to implement functional interfaces. What are functional interfaces? Let's look it up. You have here functional interface. So basically a functional interface is an interface that has only one abstract method. So for example, if we go to the function, if we go to the function interface, you see it has only one abstract method, which is the method apply, but it doesn't have any other abstract methods. The other methods are already implemented. And this is the only condition for any interface to be considered a functional interface. You can even create your own functional interfaces if you want. The only condition is that you only add one abstract method to that interface. And you don't even have to annotate it. The annotation is just informative and so that the compiler can break if you try to implement new methods on that interface. In here you can still see that there are some warnings. So what happens if we, instead of having this return word here, we replace it with a lambda expression? So now we see it's even more compact than before. Now we have dropped the curly braces and the return and even the semicolon at the end. And we can do the same here. You see? So now it's much more compact. And if we run this, we still get the same output. And this is what we call a lambda expression. This is the most compact way to write a lambda. And again, we don't have to declare the inputs and outputs because they are inferred by the compiler. But still, we have some warnings. So let's see what happens if we... Oh, it says replace lambda with method reference. And here as well, replace lambda with method reference. And you might be wondering, what is this weird notation with two columns and the method and the name of the class? And to be fair, I also found it a bit odd when I started using it. This is what we call in Java a method reference. And this was also introduced in Java 8. And this is the most compact way in which we can implement an anonymous class. And there are many different ways of method reference. So this is probably the most common way in which you can use a method reference, which I call the first argument method reference. To make it a bit easier to understand, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract this into a variable. So we can actually do this. I'm going to do it here. And let's call it to uppercase function. So if you see, this method reference is stored as a function which takes a string as a parameter and returns a string. So the what where is the parameter here? If you see this method doesn't take any parameters, but it actually has one implicit parameter, which is the object in which you are actually invoking the method. So if you invoke the method to uppercase, you are invoking it on a string like this, for example. Let's write Mati to uppercase. So there is no argument here, but we have one implicit parameter here, which is a string in which we are invoking the method. That's how first argument method reference works. So the first argument in the Lambda is going to be used as the this object to invoke the method. And the syntax is we add the class two columns, and then the method. And this is equivalent to writing this, for example, s, and we can say s to uppercase. So you see, if I write this automatically, it gives me the hint to change it to method reference. It's a bit odd at the beginning, but then you get used to it, and it's really, really useful. Now let's take a look at a different type of method reference. This one is the one I call 
the static method reference. And that's because we're calling a static method. For static method references, this right here is equivalent to writing something like this. Let's say big decimal and we say string dot value of and we send big decimal as a parameter. So if you see the first argument becomes the argument of the static method. So this is what happens here. If we run this program, it will turn each of these into a string and then it will print them. Let's let's take a look. And there it is. So in this case, the first argument is not the object on which we are going to invoke the method, but actually the first argument of the method we are invoking. And this can be a bit confusing at the beginning, but trust me, it gets better. Now, let's say we want to sum all these decimals. So what we can do here is we can change this function with another one called reduce, which basically is used to do any kind of aggregation. But we want to do sum, so we're going to say big decimal add. And then since this returns something called an optional, what we have to do is get. And there we go. We can store this into a variable and let's call it sum and we can print it on our standard output. There we go and let's run this program. And there it is, the sum 200. This is what we expected. And you might be asking what's happening here? What's going on? So let's take a look. If we see what we are doing here is we're sending the method add and the method add, if we look at the signature, it receives a, a big decimal as an argument, but the reduce function receives a binary operation. So basically it receives two arguments. Let's extract it here. The binary operation can be declared like this. So you see two arguments, big decimal one and big decimal two. And we are basically saying add So you see what's going on here. The first argument is being invoked with the method and the second argument is passed as the first parameter. In this case, the only one, but it can also be that we have more. And if we had more arguments here, we can still use this as a method reference. So this gives me the option of transforming it into a method reference. You see? So this is a very compact way of doing the addition of two big decimals because the method takes only one parameter and is invoked on one. So what we're saying basically is take the accumulated value and add it to the new value. So the first value that we will have is 30 then, and that becomes our accumulated value then we add 50 and our accumulated value is 80 then we add 100 to our 80 and we have 180 and finally we add 20 and we have 200 and i still call this the first argument method reference because the first argument is of the lambda is used as the this object and the second argument is used as a first argument on the method. You can always store method references in variables or you can even store them in fields, in static methods, in classes. Uh, anywhere you can store a variable, you can store a method reference as a function or as a implementation of a functional interface. And, and that becomes very, very handy in a lot of situations. So now let's say we want to map all these big decimals into percentages strings or JSONs. Let's say percentages JSONs, and then we want to print them. So for each, we want to do something there. So we have 
this map here we want to turn them into JSON percentages and then we have the for each there and let's remove this here so let's for the sake of this example I'm going to create a class and let's add a method here to transform a de big decimal into a percentage so we can say um, public string to json percentage and it takes a big decimal and in this method we're going to write a json so a json has two curly braces then we add value and the value is going to be the value is going to be the big decimal as a string and the percentage symbol like that and here we say i forgot here there we go and i forgot also the return there and now let's create a percentage here let's store it here percentage percentage and we can use it here using method reference to transform this into a json and now we can print it by using system out print line and let's run this and as you can see we have our json's so what happened here what we did was use a method reference on an object and this i call the object method reference the object method reference is very similar to the static method reference but in this case we are invoking the method on the object that we send here and the first argument becomes the first argument of the lambda and uh, one thing that you really need to take care of is that if you do this method here on an object and the method is not stateless the method can actually modify the object so we can even try that and let's say we want to before let's say we want to have the sum of all the big decimals and we want an accumulation of it so we can say big decimal uh, we can say sum dot add decimal and then uh, I forgot to store it some and then we can do the transformation so now we should see an accumulation going on there when we run this oh I forgot to initialize the big decimal sorry my bad so this is big decimal zero <laughs> I forgot to change this as well so in here we have to add some and there we go now it's there now it's accumulated you see we have actually changed the status of the object that we sent as parameter and uh, this is not very obvious so we have to be very careful when we do this kind of behavior we try to avoid this as much as we can unless it really really makes sense to do this for example the the method name is not very nice so we can actually rename it and we can say uh, to json accumulated percentage let's say so now it's a bit better but still you have to be very very careful when you're working with stateful all right so this was it about land expressions and method references i i thought it would it would be very good for us to learn this because I actually use it a lot in my Kafka Streams tutorials and maybe some of you are not very familiar with Java 8, the streaming API or the new Lambda Expressions module. So I hope this was helpful and as always share with your friends, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. This is very very helpful and also if you want you can check out my Twitter page in which I also post threads with a lot of information about Java. Kafka, Kafka Streams, 
Uh, so I did a thread on method references in here and uh, it's really really useful for me to interact with you guys through Twitter. Um, some people send me messages, we speak about the, what's going on in the tech world so please please follow me there as well, get in touch, I would love to hear from you and uh, I'm working really hard to create more material for you so that you can learn more about Java, Kafka and all the things that we love. So this is it for today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.